believe is going to be one of the most exciting events that we've ever put on here at Kendall at Lexington. Um, it's exciting to marketing because we have uh, more than a third of the Sunrise Ridge Cottages represented here, which means we can talk to you all at once about this. No, <laughs> so, no, we're just really happy you're here. Um, again, we're, I'm going to go over um, broadly what is in the resident and care agreement, which we refer to as your contract. I'm not going to go over it line by line. I'm going to point out some of the major sections that we tend to get many of, the question, many of our questions. And then, of course, take time to read through it. Come back to us if you have specific questions, especially about the legalese of some of these things. I may need a little more time to get back to you on that. Um, we've heard mostly from folks that have read through the contract before that they find it rather simple to read through, not too much legalese, but some folks do share it with their attorneys if they do want some more um, feedback. Um, so um, I'll start a bit. There'll be time um, to ask questions at the end, but if there's something that's quite urgent and you'd like to ask it in the middle of my presentation, please do so. And I have a microphone here, Sarah and Mary Beth. You're going to also hear from Karen Jackson and Mary Beth, who are going to talk about the pieces of the what we call the move-in packet, which are documents that you're required to fill out. Um, but before we get started, I do just want to introduce Karen Jackson and Kathy Lewis. Come on over here. You all have met Kathy Lewis when you did your health admission uh, review, and she's an important piece once you do move here, an important contact that you'll um, still um, have here at Kendall. And Karen Jackson, many of you have not met before. She is our Director of Resident Services. Um, you can also call her KJ. And uh, she'll just tell you a little bit about what she does here and how she'd be able to help you once you're here. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, as she mentioned, I go by KJ, mostly because there's another Karen in the building, but it makes it simple. Um, I'm the Director of Resident Services, so I oversee social services, activities, health and wellness. I'm also the Risk Manager for Kendall. Um, predominantly, I am Kathy's partner in crime. Okay, so uh, I can put on a Band-Aid, but I'm not a nurse. Um, but Kathy and I kind of team up together to support the independent living or residential residents here at Kendall. And so sometimes I'll call her and say, I think there's something medical going on and get her assist. Sometimes she'll call me and say, I think this person's a little depressed or I think this person needs some help getting, you know, getting some help in the home. So we kind of partner together in terms of supporting you as independent residents. And so, um, really, I just want to say it's a pleasure. I haven't met you individually, but it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, we'll welcome you to Kendall, and feel free to reach out at any point that I can support you. Hi, folks. I think I probably have met everybody in this room at least once, uh, maybe in person, maybe over the phone. Um, after you have moved in, a couple of weeks after you've settled in, I'm going to put a little note in your brown mailbox out here so that we can sit down and review what you've already told me about and see what kind of medical changes you've had since we had that conversation. We also do that file of life that I may have mentioned to you that you keep on your refrigerator, so we need to finalize that. And I'm here as your RN to consult with any time and... KJ's partner in crime to help support you in any way that we can from a medical and social standpoint. There are many things that we can offer you, um, equipment on loan, in addition to the fact that I can do a lot of those things that an RN does. I'm also the RN nurse manager for the Webster Center, so I help facilitate some of those transfers back and forth. Maybe you are post-op and need a little bit of help and need a little bit more than you can have in your home to get through that post-operative period. So, KJ and I can facilitate that also. So nice to see you all again and look forward to seeing you when you move in. Well, thank you so much. And KJ will be back up with Mary Beth to review um, some of the information that you'll need to be filling out. Um, so again, I'll speak to the resident care agreement. We refer to it as the contract. There are two contract documents. 
One is the extensive coverage for continuing care, and the other is modified coverage for continuing care. Most of you have already decided, while we went through the financial and health review process, which type of agreement that you would like and that you are qualified for. There are some who have not come to the final conclusion on whether you want a modified agreement or not. So that is something that we can talk about offline. Um, this, we will not be signing these for about, uh, until about two months or so before you move in. So you have until that time to decide that. But overall, we've referred to extensive contract as full life care. You're covered in the full continuum. Modified contract, you're covered independent living and assisted living. And there are two options, either your first 60 days in skilled or a three year per diem, diem, meaning you pay first three years and then you can buy back into life care after that. Again, the decision for a modified contract does have to be made before you move in. You are welcome to uh, follow along in your PowerPoint presentation. This really isn't meant to, for you to read. It's more for my reference to make sure I hit all the special um, points. But I pulled out some pieces that um, this um, document matches what you have in front of you. So basically the contract points out what's your occupancy date, what are the services that are provided, and what is your unit number, your cottage number and address. Everything in the contract, your fee, your entrance fees, your monthly fees, are all related to when you move in um, and what type of cottage that you have. And that will be spelled out in your contract. There's a page that is in both agreements um, that also breaks down the monies that you paid to us. So it'll show the deposits that you already gave to us, including any waitlist deposits, and it'll break down for you what your entrance fee is, minus those deposits, and this is what you'll owe. You'll notice on that page, it'll say, um, what is due now? That'll say zero, because you are gonna be signing this a couple of months before you move in. Your entrance fee is due on your occupancy date. So you will not be paying any payment when you sign this contract. Your monthly fee will be prorated for that month. So if you move in in the middle of the month, it'll be half of your monthly fee will be due on your occupancy date. Some will choose to pay this a little bit before they move in. Some will plan on having it wired to us the day of, or you can write us a check the day of. I talk a little bit about promissory notes at the end of this, um, so that's also uh, will, will come in um, to play. However, this agreement does not reference the promissory note at all. It'll say, what is your entrance fee and what do you owe? The other piece, uh, in addition to deciding whether you're having a life care contract or the modified contract, there's also the uh, choice you have to make on what type of entries, entrance fee refund you would like. Um, almost all residents at Kendall at this point choose the 2% declining refund option. Uh, many of you, we, we spoke to you about this, that is also referred to as 0% refund, meaning it's two per declines by 2% every month for 50 months. So if you were to leave the community or pass away, the refund to you or your estate would be zero if you were here for 50 months. If you were here for 25 months, 25 times two is 50, so 50% 50 would be refunded. You can also choose, again, before signing this contract, to opt for a 50 or 90%. So at any time, if you were to leave the community or pass away, this 50% uh, or 90% would be refunded to you or your estate. <clears throat> when, this is a, a piece, in, it's 11H, I believe in your printout it just says H, so I added the 11 here. Section 11 talks about what happens um, with this refund. So if you are due a refund, this talks about that you will not get that refund until we have resold your uh, cottage. So it has happened that folks move in and they have the 2% declining, but within a couple of years they decide to leave the community or pass away. 
Um, if they passed away, their estate does not get the refund due to them until we have occupied their apartment or cottage again. Our policy over the last few years, because our uh, cash flow and uh, Kendall's financials have been very strong, is that we, ret we return that refund at reservation. So once someone reserves, we, re we refund it. But the contract says once they actually occupy it and start paying their fees. Uh, section 7 talks about just what facilities are provided by us. So these are not all of them, but it talks about you are, you are paying for your access to um, your living accommodations, um, the community facilities, and the health centers, assisted living and nursing center. That's really what your uh, contract is entitling you to. And this is just one piece that we've gone over a lot with you, uh, modifications. Um, other than the ones we undertake, require approval by the executive director. So we have all gone through extensive option choices before you're moving in, but once you do move, if you want to make any changes to your cottage, you do have to um, go through Kendall before you can make those. These services that are provided to you, um, your meal plan, many of you are aware that's that 300 points per person per month. Um, you can carry up to 600 points, and you can use them for your meal program, um, but also to purchase groceries in the dining room. You may also use your points in the restaurant. It talks about in the contract when you're able to get tray service. Some folks say, can I get um, you to deliver my lunch every day? Well, we, your contract doesn't entitle you to just have us bring you your meal, like a to-go type of a service, but if you are not feeling well, you can get a medical reason why your meals will be delivered to you. Um, some communities have added that sort of to-go delivery um, type of service. We, we do not have that as part of our contract. Uh, housekeeping services, a couple times a month, and then a couple times a year, um, you get a, a, big, a bigger deep cleaning. Of course, all your maintenance and repair, um, groundskeeping, and then that brings into play the landscaping of the gardens around your cottage as well. So Kendall takes care of the whole property, mows the grass, does all of that, and then uh, we've been all in conversation about if you want your own gardens around your cottage or not. Utilities, uh, Kendall pays for all utilities except for if you want a landline phone. And uh, right now, internet is not included. You all have seen my notices that we are um, soon to be implementing um, internet as part of the covered utility. Um, and I was hoping to have Mark, our IT director, speak to you at the end today, but he's got um, called away, so he's not able to speak with us. Um, however, that will, once you all move in, that'll be implemented. Um, internet will be included as a covered utility. We believe that the level of service of the internet that's going to be provided is going to be adequate for all of our residents' needs. If you're a very high user of internet, you will also be able to get your own internet as well. So um, some residents may choose to do that if they feel they're going to be streaming a lot of videos all day or using uh, programs that are highly dependent on high-speed internet connection. Other than that, we think we've developed a system that will handle even Sunrise Ridge resident internet use, and you won't have to pay extra for that. Uh, local transportation, there are regular bus trips around town. You can also schedule doc local doctor's appointments. And we just implemented a transportation policy where if you need to go to some of the hospitals that are outside of our local area, there is a fee-based system that is much more affordable than the taxi around here. Um, there's also a volunteer uh, resident pool where residents drive um, folks around. And of course, Kendall Lexington does pay property tax, so we take care of that it's with your fees. Uh, um, I mentioned earlier, assisted living is covered by all contract types. So your modified um, 
whether you have a modified contract with a full life care contract, assisted living is covered. If you, this section just talks about if you were to get a modified contract, your, month, your monthly fee would be adjusted to take that into account. So for instance, if you are a single occupant of a cottage, you move into skilled nursing, you no longer pay the monthly fee that is specified in your contract, you pay the per diem rate in skilled nursing. If you are a couple, then one, if one is still on contract, they pay the single person contract fee and the other person pays the per diem rate. If you, are, if you are a couple and you're both on life care, or if you're a single person on life care, you never have to worry about the per diem rate in skilled nursing. Your monthly fee remains the same. If both of you are occupying a cottage and then one decides to uh, need skilled nursing, the other in your residential living cottage, your fees do not change because you need a higher level of care. And this again just speaks to that section. This is in the modified contract that, that um, speaks to that. The contracts modified in life care are almost identical except for these two sections that talk about this. Okay, we get asked a lot about the requirement in the contract to carry insurance. Again, Kendall is providing your long-term care. You still need to carry your Medicare and your health care insurance. And Kendall wants to make sure that you're adequately insured, including for prescription drug coverage. So there is a requirement in here that you carry that, and um, Karen can speak a little to that as well, but that is to be sure that if it did come to a point where you were to need skilled nursing or even rehabilitative care, that those um, health care prescriptions and medical procedures would be covered. <clears throat> These are a few sections I pulled out about your changes in your living accommodations. Um, if, you were to if you were to need to move, um, if you're a single occupant of a cottage and you needed to move to assisted living, there's a 30-day transition period. Um, if it was a, for double occupants, that one would move, the other would stay, and your fees would be adjusted if needed, or you would um, just maintain your same fee under the life care contract. If one person was to pass away, if you're to double occupancy of a cottage and one person passed away, this section talks about that it now, it now becomes a single occupant monthly fee. Any refunds, of course, would be due. And this is the only um, provision in the contract that allows, that provides for an ability to move to a smaller accommodation. So in our contract, the only reason you can ask to move into a smaller accommodation is if there's a death of a co-occupant. However, Kendall has another policy that you can also request one for health or financial reasons. Um, no one do this, <laughs> but if you want to back out of your contract, it's a 2% of the full entrance fee is your penalty, plus you do not get any of your money that you put toward options returned. Um, again, these are your, uh, the rights and obligations. So you have the right to occupancy of your property. However, Kendall does have the right of entry to provide maintenance, to provide housekeeping, and other services. And some of those forms that Karen and Mary Beth are gonna go over are for you to be able to give permission for us to do that. Um, you are required to carry some type of what would be referred to as a tenant insurance. Um, Kendall does not cover your belongings or any liability that um, if you were to um, um, be responsible for causing harm to someone, you would need your own insurance for that, just as if you were going to be renting uh, a home. And then this talks about your arrangements in case of in in incapacity or obligations to tell us about arrangements of your debt. These are also forms that are in the packet. And I got a question that, do you really need to know um, which funeral home we uh, want before we move in if we don't live around here. 
And again, this is in the contract, this is what we hope for, but if you say to us, can you give me a couple of months to figure this out? Of course. And then the last, last section of the contract is really an addendum. And this is where we are going to be putting in those forms that you all already signed, attached to your contract, so it'll be part of your contract, the fees that you paid us for any op options or upgrades. I mentioned um, earlier the promissory note. So again, the contract is gonna, the numbers in the contract are going to refer to total entrance fees and deposits paid toward those entrance fees to date. If at the time of occupancy, you have not sold your home and you can demonstrate a need, a financial need, you, you would be um, eligible for a promissory note. That promissory note, um, typically, again, we can have, there is some um, discretion here, covers 50% of the entrance fee. So all of you have already paid 15% of your entrance fee. So if needed, at closing, you could pay another 35% and then get a note for 50% of, of the entrance fee. That is a 0% loan for six months. If you needed it, we can continue it at interest rates. Prime plus one interest rate for the first six months and so forth. Um, our financial manager just wanted to make sure I pointed out that this promissory note is not a guaranteed piece for your contract. It's We offer it because my, uh, Kendall is in a very strong financial um, position where we do have these the cash flows and the reserves to be able to have you defer your entrance fee. So we think everything's gonna go fine, but again, it's not a guarantee. So um, just if you think you're gonna be needing this, start talking to us now, um, and then also, um, you know, we can start setting up, get an idea of who we think may need these. All right, should I go back to anything? Any questions that are, that I did not, um, Cover any questions or issues I did not cover? Just on the, the promissory note, it applies only in situations in which you have not. Uh, I'm sorry. In terms of the promissory note, it only applies to situations in which you have not uh, sold your primary residence in the past, or you know, not for tax purposes, in order to carry it over to the mm -hmm. next. Uh, yeah, correct. Year. Yeah. Um, you know it. Again, if you have a special case, I can bring it, always bring it forth because um, they might decide, oh, this could benefit Kendall in some way. But typically it is for the sale of your primary residence in the cases where it's going, you know, we, Kendall at Lexington doesn't want folks to pull all this money, say, out of retirement, suffer consequences um, of penalties that may make it harder in the future for you to pay your monthly fees. So we see this promissory note as a true partnership, um, but it is to be there in case of need. Any other questions? Uh, about the tell you provide access to a central television, can you explain that, can you explain that in more detail? Uh, sure. In your in your packet that Mary Beth and um, Karen are going to go over, there's a list of the channels that are provided as part of the standard cable package. You can also contact um, Comcast, uh, which is the um, cable provider here, and get more channels. They would provide you a credit because um, Kendall already has an agreement with them. Okay. That, yeah, that answers my yep. question. And it covers one box. So if you wanted additional boxes in each room, Comcast, I think, now charges nine, nine or ten dollars per box per month. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? And and some questions may get answered as they review the materials in the packet. Would you all like to come up? Sure. Okay, so if you will open your packet, and that, by the way, cover of that packet is beautiful, 
Quilt by Nancy Epley. Isn't that pretty? Karen's go going to go into fine detail about the 